that the hamster dance thing is just a sped up version of the beginning part of that. Canada games, eh? Despite Murray's study of the long chopping guide, none of us are skilled enough to beat John Basson at his own game. So, though it pains me to say it, we'll have to cheat. But Long OK was stealing. Get us a good score, and then let Basson up for his turn. While he's chopping, I'll sneak the eagle egg into his trousers and the protective parents. You got something to say, Bentley? His axe swings. He's gonna sneak an egg in his trousers. Given your ascension skills, I've signed you up for the ice wall climb. We'll keep Basson from Again, Bentley, where, where are you the getting these images of the future? Grappling lines. And finally, I'll represent our team in the log rolling competition. With my knowledge of rotational mechanics, we're log sure equals R. Oh, wait. Sly will be in charge of greasing Basson's logs, so he has no chance of beating it. If you guys are ready, I say we head out and show these meathead lumberjacks what we're made of. Anyway. <laughs> oh yeah, I need to come out as a Bentley, but did you see how much that, that uh, pounce was going to be? Did you look up how much it was going to be, or, or were no. you just talking about it? I was talking about it. I'm just well, saying. let's see. Guess we'll need to get some coins. Well, oh, that's not helpful. What? What are you doing? What well, isn't helpful? Oh, no. Well, isn't that a kick in the teeth? Obviously, folks, after we get done with this, we're going to be done for this session. And then the next session, unless we get interrupted or something, will be the last one for Sly 2. Sly 2. Sly Raccoon. <sighs> you Canadians are a weird word. Even though like, they're... you can't call it a fanny pack. Oh, oh, oh. Well, I was talking about the British, but you know, the the uh, over in the UK, they had to call it Sly Raccoon. Did I not say the British? You said the Canadians. Oh, I meant the I, I meant the British. I mean, the British and Canadians are both inferior to Americans. <laughs> So Mortal Kombat One, like I said, it's gonna be a it's gonna be a reboot, but not as as soft of a reboot as uh, MK9 was because Liu Kang made his own complete timeline, his own timeline. So like a lot of the backstories are gonna be like similar but different at the same time. I can't remember if it was like he's now like. Uh, Sub Zero and and uh, 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 Scorpion are like brothers now or something, I think. Who are Sub Zero and Scorpion like in his new timeline? Oh. And like. Why? It's Ma dumb. Melina's Melina is actually Katana's sister, but she's got like a disease that's causing her teeth to to you know. That's weird. I don't know if I like that. I don't know if I like Viet. 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 But a lot of the characters, a lot of the characters they're going to be having that they've announced are going to be characters that are, um, characters from the, uh, characters from previous games, like before they did the reboot series. So they're going to, they're going to be bringing back characters from the 3D era, or, you know, the PS2 era, Mortal Kombat's. As in, like, Shujinko, uh, from Deception. I didn't even know he was going to be in the game until I saw him. I just thing. hope that they have mocap. I don't know if they'll have him or not. I don't know. He... Oh, my balls. Oh, yeah. Oh, my ball. You know what is funny is that, like, uh, uh, Ed Boon, you know, co-creator of Mortal Kombat. Well, he's pretty much the face of Mortal Kombat at this point. But, like, he, uh, um, he actually asked on Twitter 
Uh-huh. If, um, if, if, uh, shoot, uh, what people would want to return to Mortal Kombat, he had like a poll or something, yeah. and a lot of people wanted, uh, Conquest to come back. As in, you know, what they had in like the PS2 era. Conquest. That was what was in like Deception oh, and Storm Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. That was pretty cool. Even the one in Mortal Kombat. Well, honestly, I think I liked the Deception one more if it had been made better. Yeah. Like, Annihilate or uh, Armageddon uh, was good, but that one was really just more like a, ref a less refined um, uh, Shaun Monks. Yeah, I guess you could say so that. So I guess, like, it'd be better to have a conquest mode and then just have games that are made like the Shadow Monks games. Yeah. I do kind of... Well, so apparently this new one is going to be having some sort of, like, a mode that's similar to Mario Party. It's just something about uh, this mode in Mortal Kombat is is uh, Mario Party with fatalities or something like that. If, you, if the if Internet Explorer is brave enough... Ask you to be your default browser. You're brave enough to ask that girl out. Abraham Lincoln, 1863. <laughs> I know that's an old one, but it's still so funny. Wait, let's see. Sorry, I was messaging somebody. And... Excuse me, sir. We humble lumberjacks would like to participate in your lumberjack game. What it takes to win the clockwork talent, Vic. Well, I'm sure enough gonna let you. They have these new redesigned. You always take my pictures, ain't you? You always put my pictures on Instagram. Well, you're the one here to take the pictures of the pets, not me. <laughs> Enjoy the moment while you think you still got a chance. It's as close to I, I expect payment, Andrew. <laughs> Oh, did you hear what Unity's doing right now? They're making a very questionable, bad decision. Have you heard about it? About what? What Unity is doing right now? No. They are... I saw so many people upset. Yeah. So apparently what they're doing is every time... Every single time someone installs a game... It, Someone installs a game, not just purchases it once. Each time they install a game, okay. Unity gets 25 cents from that company that's using it. Which doesn't sound like much until you realize there's, you know, thousands, possibly millions of people installing a game. What if they uninstall it and reinstall it? They're going to have to undo that, but... That won't go well. Yeah, that, no, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's going to have the opposite effect where they thought they were going to make more money, but instead they're going to lose money because a lot of these companies will probably just drop them if they're going to pull that crap. Like, it's one thing if they just bought the game and, you yeah. know, but to do that every single time they, you know, that's pretty bad. And, like, nobody understands why they're doing it, other than, like, they probably think it was a good way to get money, but, you know, they're going to say, well, it's just 25 cents, you know, but, you know. What? I think you better rethink those scores, boys. What you intended to give me was perfect tens, right? <sighs> He's a politician. So oh. What about how Bentley was just talking like we humble lumberjacks, you know? Lumberjacks. This part is is again one of those parts where it's like it's either it's either I can get through it really quickly like I'm currently doing, or it takes a while because something always messes me up. This part's a little annoying. Wow. Okay, don't even load in the, uh, the... The outhouses. It's just a random explosion of things. Okay. 
Okay, that's... got him. Alright. Moray. I just like how no one's saying anything about this. Uh, how come... how come no one else showed up for the games? Oh, I know. <laughs> Text. I was messaging one of my friends online, saying, uh, what, uh, I was I was showing them a picture of like the the new 2023 Furbies, and they look quite different. Uh -huh. Like the shape is enough to know it's a Furby, but it looks quite different now, especially in the eyes. It's not like that one. If someone was thinking about this, it's not the one where it's like has like digital eyes or whatever, mm -hmm. but it's it it just looks weird. Like, um, does Furby stand for fur baby? I guess so. I don't know. Anyway, so yeah. Anyway, so I was mentioning a friend of mine who who's like upset, who like obsesses over like the the memes and stuff of Furby or just all the stuff who who really likes it. Um. And I showed her a picture that I was like, what have they done? And, and then she's like, ew, what is that? I want one. <laughs> or something like, like that. Carson Rick, I hate her so much. I want to travel the world together. <laughs> one lucky turtle. So, um... Gene Bison... What about M. Bison? Okay, I'm just making this up on the fly. You're not going turbo, are you? Lure the judges one by one into that cave. Once inside, you throw them into the cave. Genius! When all three judges have been restrained, we'll be able to. This is the one time we'll need to use the clock thing. But anyway, yeah, my friend. Bison in the background, <laughs> <run out of logs. laughs> uh, Remember, we unequipped him. Yeah, I know. I told you not to do that. <laughs> um. But yeah, my uh, friend of mine, um, which is my which is my lane claim to fame. Is that uh, she is? She's like so either marketing or something when it comes to uh, the uh, shoot. What's it? The yacht company <laughs> or yacht games or something? Or you know, like the ones who made Shovel Knight and stuff. Uh. Yeah, she's like in charge of uh, something like this. She's she's been in, she's actually been in like a not a Nintendo Direct, but like one of those indie ones they done. And she's been in a few things. She's actually been on G4. <laughs> you know, the reboot G4. Uh -huh. Which, you know, it's unfortunate that that's the one she was on. But, you know, it's whatever. She's she's not that much older than, she's not that much older than me. I don't know the way they look. Um, but anyway, yeah, so... Again, that's my lame claim to fame is that I'm friends with somebody only online, but you know I'm, I'm friends with somebody who's who's like involved with like Shovel Knight and stuff and all those games. A really, really, really lame. Lame claim, claim to fame. fame. Um, in there. Can we go in there? Thank you. The little clock there is. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to fight this on? <laughs> Yeah, I let you do it. I've been fighting all the other bosses. Yeah. the consequences for incorrect scores. Wait a second. You are the judges I hired. It's the scrawny raccoon and his annoying friends. If you want the challenge, then why don't you just take him? What about how like Bentley doesn't get knocked out? <laughs> he was still standing. 
Hey, he's doing the <laughs> his idle animation. I'm awake, but not so loud. I have a splitting headache. Where are we? What's going on? This looks like the sawmill control room. We saw it must have thrown us in here for interrogation later. I, for one, would like to escape before he returns. It looks like we're pretty well sealed in here. Unless... Unless what? Unless you can fit through that hole. I think I could squeeze through there. I'll drop down and try to free you guys from the outside. If there's any trouble, I'll call with this walkie-talkie. With this walkie-talkie I was holding the whole time. Look what we just happened to have. Even though it looks like uh, at least Sly and Bentley could squeeze through the, the area. Sounds like a plan. Good luck, Bentley. And remember to shout if I can help you from up here. You know, this part here. This boss battle. Bentley, you okay? I can't see you from in here, but I heard the fall. I'll be fine. Just give me a moment to catch my breath. <laughs> well now, Katie Bridges. I should have figured a puny turtle like you'd find a rat hole to squirm through. Well, I... Just dropped my glasses, had to come pick him up. I ain't like you, boy. I ain't stupid. When y'all were unconscious, me and my boys paid a visit to your hideout and found all them clockwork parts. But the thing, too, Arpeggio is willing to plump down a king's ransom for the whole lot. I even threw in the talent. You stole all the clockwork parts? Arpeggio has them all? <laughs> I wouldn't expect one of your kind to understand the finer points of commerce. You turtles are too stupid to know a woodcutter from a woodchuck. That's it. I like to show you just how stupid. Stupid. <laughs> this fight. On my command. I hear you. Prepare yourself, Bison. Out and guard. Okay, Walnut. Get ready for a smushing. Let's rock. <laughs> Saw blades. Wait. Wait. There you go. Logs. <laughs> Flames! Blaze! Let's get this for him. There's like some like. Oh, I guess you can't use your bombs? No. Blades! Yeah. Dang it, I was trying to get a, a thing. Sauce? <laughs> so he says sizzle and dis Sometimes he's like sizzle and dizzle or something like that. So the music is so intense. It's so funny, I don't know why I thought about this. Whenever I give my opinions on the, uh, the Banjo-Kazooie games, yeah. there's always, um... Let's get to killing. <laughs> there's, al there's always, like, people are always like, You like ba you like Nuts and Bolts more than Tui? But then I have to clarify just so they don't, like, have pitchforks at me and I say, I still like the first game the best. And they're like, well, at least you like that, or, you know. <laughs> Tarnation. 
I just thought about that. I just thought about Tarnation. Once again, Brains triumph over Braun. What about a, a nation filled with tar? Is it a tar nation? That was some fast thinking. Don't forget about me. You did a great job opening that door, Murray. Thanks. Mm. Oh, I said a little bit retarded. Of course, whenever we were, but look, of course, whenever we, whenever I was in school and we were younger and stuff, whenever they said pat ourselves on the back, we actually did that. Shake a leg that blimps on its way. Shake a leg. Wait, she? Oh, right there, right there, right there. Shake a leg. This this one they give you plenty of time. It's just that you know they give you the illusion that you gotta hurry. That you gotta bury. You gotta bury. I like the start right here. Like even though there's a bounce pad thing there, a bouncy thing, it's it's just. <laughs> well, it's all in. Engine. But then like yeah, and then <laughs> yeah, it's kind of sad. Like in the previous part, they were so excited because they got like three different. Clockwork parts, and now they lost them all in this very next part. Or you know this. As we shut ourselves into the Northern Light battery, it became black. For a few long minutes, we just sat there in Excuse darkness. Excuse me, it became of color. No one dared to talk for fear that John Dasan's men might discover where we were hiding. Time seemed to have stopped, and then we felt. It. We were being lifted up to Arpeggio's blimp. It was all so strange. The focus of all our schemes had been stolen from us. All the clockwork parts were gone. Looking around the inside of the battery, I knew we all felt it. Failure. I was twitchy and ready for action. Any action. Bentley tried to make some sense of the situation by I'm drawing up pain. meaningless plans. <laughs> I want to slap him. Like Murray? <laughs> Murray took it the worst. He just sat there sobbing while the team van floated away over the horizon. That van was his life. I knew I'd have to find a way to make it up to him. So, let's see, I guess we'll go to the... To the last episode. It's kind of weird that it's eight. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know in the future, in like the next game, it's like five or six episodes, and this one. Is... Yeah, but they're also really long. We yeah. Heading east across the Atlantic Ocean, stowaways on a giant airborne fortress. Though time was short, we made sure to study up on our unknowing host, Arpeggio. Arpeggio. By attending a prestigious boarding school, the young Arpeggio excelled in all subjects, but he never managed to keep up with the other boys physically. Sadly, his wings, due to their small size, were useless for flight. <laughs> Furious at his feeble body, he focused his powerful mind to search for a cure in the works of the Italian Renaissance masters. Their notebooks provided the springboard for this sinister young genius, and it wasn't long before the Claw Gang took him on as chief inventor. His talents must have been at work repurposing all the clockwork parts for their criminal schemes, and now this mastermind is in possession of all the parts. It's only a matter of time before he puts them back together. And when that happens, well, I'm not gonna let that happen. So before I was really confused about what he, uh, like I thought for a moment that it was saying like he was the inventor of the clockwork parts or something. I was like, wait a minute, how can that be? Yeah, clockwork's ancient. Yeah. It's kind of it's kind of interesting that he it is I do like how in Sly Four they they have clockwork appear in the background of certain places over time you know barrel bound. We'll get it next time. We didn't need the shrink thing that Bentley has. <laughs> Mm. 
So anyway, folks, that's it for next time. For this time, Andrew, go ahead and say, give a good word. Uh, yeah. So make sure you save enough money for feral pounce, or I fairly pounce on you and beat you up. Well, um, all right. I'll be calling the cops afterwards. All right. So, folks, thanks for watching. Okay. Hi. I mean.